everyone so I thought I'd show you a quick example of a filterable dashboard this one behind me is using pivot charts and slicers to let us jump around and select different regions so I want to show you how I do it start to finish let's hop right in I'm gonna drop it a background color add in our background shapes so our fill color is a gradient set up from the same matching background color to yellow color just to give that glow effect we've also set a glow just so that the whole thing glows a little bit on the edge to give it that neon kind of effect and next we're going to insert a few lines just to block out the different sections and style them okay so once we drop all these in using the line tool we just make sure they're all spaced out evenly and styled if you're having trouble aligning things, multi-select two of your shapes, go to the Shape Format tab, and start exploring these alignment options. These will help you get everything aligned evenly and spaced out evenly. Next, we're going to drop in our text. Uh, that's just using the Insert Text Box option. And as always, when you drop in text, we want to go no fill, no line. We just want the text itself. OK, and then do the same thing with all the other text on the page. Okay, great, we got our main text areas. Next big one is to add in our metrics. So we are gonna insert two more text boxes. I'm just gonna copy paste to do this. And these text boxes, we're gonna remove the text inside them, go to our formula bar, hit equals, and point it at the cell that has the value that we want. And then we're gonna style this text just to make it look the way we wanna make it look. Great, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, excellent, we got our metrics in place. I think it's time to start adding our charts. So we're gonna be using a pivot chart in this and a geo chart. The pivot chart is pretty straightforward. We go to our pivot table where we have our data, go to insert, select pivot chart. We're gonna paste this over into our dashboard to style it. Okay, so first things first, I remove the background color and the outline and make my text font colors match with my background. I'm gonna move my legend to the top of the page. I'm gonna make these background uh, guidelines here dashed. I just find that that looks nice in these kind of situations. And then just increase the transparency because the bright white is a little too bright and distracts from the chart itself. So if you look at my chart now, I have two series. I want one of those series to actually be a area line chart. So I'm gonna to click to that series, go up to change chart type, select area line, and it's gonna to convert to an area line. And then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna style these just to get the right colors and effects that I want. Okay, so let me show you the styling I did here. The uh, area line chart in the background is a gradient from a super bright yellow to a slightly more transparent yellow. And the other bar is just a bar chart in white, nothing fancy there. Also on the area chart, I added an outline in yellow as well in like a fully saturated yellow. Awesome, looks good, I think it's time to start doing the geo chart. So I have another video that goes into more depth on this, but geocharts require you to build your pivot table with each of your states and the metric you want for each state, and then also do an equivalent table next to it using this little formula here that duplicates it over because you can't make a geochart out of a pivot table. You have to make it out of a regular table. So our data is highlighted. We go to insert. We go to recommended charts in this case, and we click on filled map. Okay, so first things first, we want to get rid of the labels because we're just not using them in this case. And we want to remove our fill and we want to remove our line. So we just have the chart itself to work with, get it all sized right. Okay, once we have it roughly in place, we have to start thinking about our colors. There's a few different elements here. So when you click into the chart itself, here's how you're going to format this thing. Your overall fill color is going to be the fill for all the states that don't have data in them. So in this case, I don't know, we'll do something dark green, just temporarily. Now when we go to our series options in the format data pane, we can set the lowest value color and the highest value color. So in this case, I'm setting my highest value as bright yellow, that's the highlight color I want, and my lowest value as something slightly darker than the background color. This just kind of highlights the region a little bit better. You can adjust this and play around with it to get it the way you like it. Once we have an idea of the colors we want, we just kind of do some final adjustments, get it all adjusted into place, and we're good to go on the geo chart. So I've done a couple other quick tweaks here just to get the look right. So if you've clicked into your chart, we set our fill color, but you can also set a line. So I'm doing a yellow line just so there's a clear outline of each of the 50 states. And then I'm also adding in a little shadow here under the format data series to give it a little bit of depth. It just makes the whole thing pop a little bit and look a little bit better. 
Uh, now the last thing is slicers. If you click into a pivot table, go to the insert tab, hit slicer, you can decide what you want to filter your data by. In this case, we've done region. Uh, paste my slicer in over here. So I have a separate video where I talk a little bit more about styling slicers. It is not easy. The user interface for styling slicers doesn't work great. But I have a template in my newsletter with a bunch of copy pastable slicer styles you can use so you don't have to manually do this yourself. Okay, so now we have this dynamic filterable dashboard. You can click into different regions, see the data update in real time, and it doesn't use anything other than the built-in default features in Excel. There's no custom coding, there's nothing else. We're just using the visual design features. The UI for these looks a lot like PowerPoint. So if you're familiar with PowerPoint, if you've done PowerPoint designs before, you're going to be really, really well set up to start doing this kind of work yourself. Let me know if you have any questions. I mentioned before I have a newsletter where I send out free templates like this, which is on my profile if you want to check it out. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And, um, you know, feel free to subscribe or like or whatever people do on TikTok. 